Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Until midnight tonight, let me get my earphones up a little bit. I uh, put in new earbuds in here, and they they I, they got to get used to me, and I got to get used to them. Hold on a second. Squeeze them, and then they go in, and then they expand, and they plug up my ear so that I don't hear an extraneous noise. There we go. Uh, I think I think those will hold. All right. Hello there, everybody. How are you? Listen, I don't have any guests tonight for the first half hour. I don't have any video to show. Well, I do have uh, one piece of video to show. Uh, I always get a little bit of uh, uh, a good laugh out of this. I, I, I love this one. We all do. It's become the most important viral video of the year. There we go. Here. I got toilet paper on my foot. Yes, I do. And goodbye. Okay. That's, uh, <laughs> well, let's watch it again. Goodbye, everybody. See you later. Bye. See you later. Okay. I love showing that. Uh, it's the only thing that makes me happy. Uh, nothing else makes me happy these days. Otherwise, I'm absolutely fucking miserable. Okay? All right? Fucking miserable. Uh, no, I just, you know, I'm just, I, I'm like everybody. I'm just miserable about the state of the uh, the country right now and the state in which it's in. Uh, but I, um, uh, you know, I've been, uh, for the last couple of days, we've been dealing with this whole thing with these uh, these bombs that somebody sent out now. Whether they were meant to go off or not is a, is a big question. But certainly what they were meant to do and what they had the effect of doing is terrorize the country. And when you terrorize people, guess what that's called? Terrorism. So whether the bombs go off or the bombs don't go off, it's terrorism, ladies and gentlemen, no matter which way you cut it. Last night we had somebody on our program saying, well, it didn't go off. Well, that doesn't make it any less of, a, of an act of terrorism. It would be make it more an act of terrorism if people got hurt, but thank God nobody did. Uh, and by the way, these bombs were capable of exploding because the one that they, uh, they got at, uh, uh, what's his name's place, the millionaire, billionaire, uh, um, it, 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 uh, they exploded that one. Uh, to make sure it wasn't going to explode or it wouldn't explode uh, anywhere else but in uh, safe conditions. Uh, but the rest of them, they didn't explode because they were able to dismantle them. They were not well made, but still it was an act of terrorism. And it was an act of terrorism against people who have been critical of uh, uh, Donald Trump. And tonight my wife uh, said to me, uh, and uh, I, I poo-pooed her with it, but if you think about it, there's a certain logic in what she said. Uh, she said, uh, do you think maybe Trump had these planted? <laughs> and I'm going, no, no way. Wait a minute. He's capable of anything. So I didn't, so I have not discounted that chance. You know, it's a little bit of a wild-eyed, wide-ass theory, but... Um, Let's let's think about it for a moment. You're uh, you're you're a president. You have no scruples. We know that that's uh, uh, the case with Donald Trump, and uh, you want to silence your critics. So what you do is you to scare them. You send out bombs to each of their homes from some covert operation that you've created, and uh, then in no way is it going to get back to you. And of course, people like me are going to sit there and go, Nah, he wouldn't do that. Oh. He wouldn't talk to the Russians, and he wouldn't uh, deal with the Saudis, and he doesn't uh, uh, seem to like and, and abide by dictators. Uh, anything's possible, I suppose, isn't it? 
you know. So anyway, I mean, I, I, I don't think so. I'd like to believe not. I'd like to believe that the guy isn't so bereft of morality that he would attempt something like that. But, you know, he does uh, various things, and, well, we can't put anything past him. Ta-da! Okay, anyway. Mm. I've been drinking coffee every night. You know why I'm drinking coffee? Because the doctor gave me for these numb feet that I have this thing called gabapentin which I had tried at one time, and it seemed to make the feet worse, but now I suddenly realize if you take it enough times, it makes the feet actually feel better. But it makes me feel kind of a little drowsy throughout the day. But the one thing is, it's had uh, two effects on me. Number one, uh, it I sleep like a baby. Uh, you know, I wake a couple of times during the night, but basically I have not been taking Xanax at all to put me to sleep. This stuff puts me to sleep, and it's not a... Uh, it, it's not a, uh, what do you call it, a, um, um, uh, a thing like Xanax. It's not a, uh, 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 what, what is Xanax? It's kind of a the, uh, tranquilizer. Uh, this is more, this, is, this does something that kind of smooths down any nerve pain you might have, okay? But still, it makes you drowsy. So, you know, just like Benadryl is not one of these mood elevating drugs or lowering drugs or whatever uh and it will put you to sleep too so it puts me to sleep but i wake up and i'm kind of a little bit a little bit drowsy the other thing though is i'm an absolute delight to be around and i think girlfriend will have to admit it and i'll have her attest to this tomorrow night i have been a sweetheart i've been just so wonderful i haven't been driving her crazy like I normally do, because I have the ability to drive her crazy. Yeah, so anyway. Uh, but, uh, you know, so uh, I, I really shouldn't let these things bother me because they shouldn't bother me. I'm doing just fine. I don't have, a, I don't have uh, these drugs bothering me to any uh, appreciable extent, and uh, they actually make my mood a little bit better, you know. So uh, I just, you know... I, so I shouldn't be letting all this stuff bother me so much. But geez almighty, you know, uh, we need a leader in this country. and We don't have a leader. We don't have somebody with leadership skills. Uh, we have somebody whose only skills in business were that he knew how to be a crook. Okay? And he knew how to, how to, how to finesse the mob and people associated with mobsters. And, uh, uh, you know... Um, but we don't have leadership. He doesn't have the leadership skills. Because if he did, you know, last night when he was giving a speech, he should have said, you know, this whole whole uh, uh, election is, is getting contentious and it leads people to do uh, terrible things like these bombs. And, you know, maybe some of my rhetoric, which I, I meant in, in jest or whatever, uh, hasn't been taken that way by some people, and it's been taken as a sense of permission by, by those people. And so I, I apologize, and I will down, bring down my rhetoric, and I hope everybody will tamp theirs down as well. But we didn't hear that from him. Instead, we heard a outright attack on the press that it's the press's fault that created this atmosphere. Uh, I got news for you, Donald. The press doesn't create atmosphere. The press reports the news, and they try to do it in as unbiased a way as possible. I know people, some people find that hard to, to believe, and it's not possible to be 100% unbiased because if you're a reporter and let's say you're a lefty and now you're out doing a story on the president, it's going to be toned somewhat by your politics. But if you're a really good reporter, you know how to put that aside and just report the news. But the problem is we don't just report the news anymore. I can't tell you how sick I am of MSNBC. I can't tell you. I'd tell you I was sick of CNN, but I don't watch them that much, although I have in the last couple of days to see how they were reporting their own big story. Uh, I watch Fox occasionally. So when I say I, I watch MSNBC most of the time and they piss me off, uh, it's because I watch them the most of anybody else. Uh, also, the other one that 
pisses me off is Lester Holt and his lousy 6.30 newscast. 6.30 here, I don't know where, what time it's on where you are. Um, let me explain why what I'm saying. Uh, I, I, if I watch MSNBC for a full day, let's say it's on from noon to 6, I'm going to see the same show six times. They all do the same stories. And sometimes if they're film stories, every other show will run one film story and every other show will run the other film story. I say film, tape, whatever it is. And I, um, I'm i just sick of the fact that they seem to all just have the same news hour after hour after hour. Now, when I was in uh, early days of radio, we did five minutes of news at the top of the hour. Usually I had to do it if I was the disc jockey, and the next, next disc jockey that came on did it. The only time that other people did it is when I got into bigger markets like New York City or Chicago, and then I had newsmen who ran, read the newscast during those five minutes. In fact, one of them was Don Cornelius when I was in Chicago. Uh, the, another one, another, another guy was doing news for me. It was usually Don Cornelius. Uh, but it was sometimes it was Bernard Shaw. Uh, he was really the head of the news department at uh, WIND in Chicago. Uh, anyway, uh, we used to have news for five minutes every hour, and I kept saying to, to, to program directors and anybody that would listen to me, uh, why do we do this? Because every hour the news is the same. And he said, we do it because the people want to know that nothing has changed. And in a way, that kind of made some kind of sense to me. They said, he said, they said, I can't remember who told me, but you know, we, we do the news every hour. And yes, it does change, but it, it only changes moderately. But that's all that people really want to know. They want to know that nothing much has happened. And if something has happened, that the news now changes and they, they, they have that piece of knowledge. And that, that even though the newscasts are a lot alike from hour to hour, over a 24-hour period, they change profoundly. Well, you could say that was the philosophy of MSNBC, except, you know, sometimes people have MSNBC on all the time. And so you're watching basically the same show. So-and-so starts off with the story about the bombs. Then the next hour, it's another hour or so about the bombs. And the next hour, it's another hour about the bombs. And you all know that on MSNBC, they're not going to be too fond of the way the president is handling it, but you can always click over to Fox and see how they're so happy with the excuses he's giving for his bad behavior. Um, in between all those stations, I've got Glenn Beck and his, uh, his thing, the, uh, the Blaze, and I've got uh, news, uh, uh, what is it, uh, the, the, uh, the right-wing news organization, uh, Newsmax. Uh, and then I've got another one, OAC. I don't know what the hell that is. And the BBC's in there somewhere. And sometimes I'll stop for the BBC because with the BBC, I've got news that's you know pretty damn good. Uh, you know, at least it's not it it's not a repetitious, and it's it it doesn't really have a viewpoint, okay? And I don't I don't really want news with a viewpoint. You know, I have my I have my political beliefs, and I know what they are. And I stick to them firmly, and they've been they've been bred into me from when I was a child. And uh, now that I'm an adult, uh, uh, I am uh, uh, fully aware of what my uh, uh, my politics are, and they're firmly entrenched. Uh, I don't think they're going to change. You're not going to see me waking up tomorrow morning and me saying, you know, being a conservative sounds like a good idea. Just like I know Phil isn't going to do that either. They, we're, we're, I'm too old to change that way. But on the other hand, I don't want to watch an organization that's just pandering to me. I, you know, I'd like to hear some news reported that maybe makes me question my own beliefs. All right? That's why I do go over to Fox occasionally, but it's a little on the difficult side because over there, it's, it, it's not that they're giving me an alternative opinion. They are dogmatically giving me an alternative opinion, just like dogmatically MSNBC is giving me a left-wing opinion. Now, 
a lot of people I know love MSNBC. Oh, I just love them. They're terrific. Isn't that Katie Turr terrific? Isn't, uh, isn't you know Chuck Todd wonderful? Isn't Rachel Maddow? Oh, God, if anybody wants to, you know, if there's any lesbian out there who sucks dick every night, it's Rachel Maddow. Uh, you know, and I don't like to be pandered to. I like to be challenged. But maybe you don't. I don't know. Maybe you just want to hear what you want to hear. You want to have your feelings justified. Uh, the only person that should justify your feelings is you. And feelings aren't hard to come by. If you just listen to your heart, then you'll know what your feelings are. And if you don't listen to your heart, well, then I guess you got to listen to MSNBC or you got to listen to Fox, you got to listen to Newsmax or whatever. Uh, I don't know where CNN fits into all this because I really don't watch CNN in a lot because I can't stand Wolf Blitzer. <laughs> you know, there's just something about Wolf Blitzer that is off putting for me. So, anyway. Um, I, uh, you know, I just, I, I'm just tired of, of the, uh, of the, uh, of the pandering that these networks do to their core audience. Oh, hey, we're Fox. We've got to pander to our, to our conservatives. Hey, we're, uh, we're MSNBC. We're going to pander to the, to the, the, uh, uh, liberals. Uh, and, you know, CNN Unfortunately, CNN has become very anti-Trump, and there's a good reason for it. Uh, if somebody was putting you down constantly, wouldn't you be against them too? You know, they've, they've been more the target of, uh, of, of Trump than any other network. I mean, I've heard no wonder the bombs went to CNN, uh, because I don't ever hear the president going after MSNBC or he's saying them by name. It's usually, it's usually CNN. And CNN has gotten to the point where Jeff Zucker over there, I think, is just so sick and fucking tired of this president calling what he does fake news that he's decided, okay, he wants to have a war, then we'll go to war against him. Um, which is not the best idea. Here's why it's not the best idea. You shouldn't let somebody dictate how you're going to handle your news. You should try to be as unbiased as possible. You, you know who started uh, CNN? was Ted Turner. And Ted Turner started it because he got sick of news that was biased. You know, he felt that he, one night he was watching CBS, or so the story goes, uh, he, or so he tells it. He was watching CBS and he saw Dan Rather, and Dan Rather did a story, and then he saw Dan Rather smirk. And he said, I want to start a network where nobody smirks. You know, where they just read the news, Right. And they and they and they're uh, honest about it, and they report it as it is. And no matter what their own political feelings are, they throw those aside and just report the news. And that's why he started CNN. I remember the day they opened up. I watched the first minute CNN started, and I remember what they said. The first thing they ever said was, "Ladies and gentlemen, this is CNN signing on for the last time." And he was, they were right. They were signing on for the last time because they've never signed off since. Uh, and the idea of a 24-7 news operation, I mean, when he said he was going to do that, I went, are you nuts? I mean, the networks have a hard time filling a half hour every night. But somehow, one thing led to another, and that became a very powerful uh, piece of, of, of information. And when CNN went to the uh, Mideast, when they, when they were reporting from Baghdad, when Baghdad was being bombed, they got their stripes. And they were officially uh, an important news operation. Um, Jane Fonda likes to say that Ted Turner actually created CNN when he was high on pot one night. <laughs> <laughs> so and it, it sounds like something you do if you're a high in pot. Hey, you know what I think we're going to do? I think I'm going to put on a 24/7 news operation. Yeah, yeah. It's called the Cable News Network. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cuz Ted Turner already had the 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 what he called the super station which was WTBS, which is now just TBS. Um I don't even know if it was called WTBS down there. But anyway, had a, so he knew how to go up on a satellite. Because that's, he was the first guy ever to use satellites to take his little 
UHF station in Atlanta, and they sent it up to the uh, up to the bird and out to all these cable systems across the country, who then went out and so they could, he even I think spent money to give them the uh, receivers for the satellite, and so they would run it on their on their station. So he took this little UHF station, which wouldn't really on its own make much money, and made it a national company. And so the next thing he did was do the same thing, but CNN. Right, as long as he had the transponders up there on satellites, and they were cheap at that time. I remember once I got to tell you this: we were doing Midnight Blue. We had a guy come in to us from one of the big satellite companies uh, who had the satellites spinning around the Earth, and he said, uh, "You know, we can let you have a transponder." Now, a transponder is one of the channels. There's, I think, maybe 20, 30 transponders on a satellite. Okay. Uh, I may be wrong, it may be more now, maybe less, I don't know, but at that time it was something like that. And he said, uh, we can give you a whole transponder. We'll give it to you for $300 a week. What? 300 bucks a week? You you know, and do you realize years later how much that would really be worth? Wow. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Uh, we turned them down because uh, my, my partner, Al Goldstein, said, eh, we don't need a satellite. So anyway, we didn't have a satellite, but we could have got, it, even if we didn't put Midnight Blue up on the satellite, we could have just sold time to people to use the satellite transponder. So anyway, um, uh, so that was the whole early iteration of, of CNN and why they existed to be an unbiased news operation. Now, granted, they're probably more biased today than they were. They're less biased than MSNBC, certainly less biased than Fox, okay? They kind of fit there somewhere in the middle where they're trying to report, and because they're trying to be so unopinionated, at least in the news hours, which end about 6 o'clock at night, so unopinionated in those news hours that... Um, uh, they get the perception that they're too much to the left or too much to the right or whatever. Anytime you try to be, if I did this show and I didn't express my opinion, everybody would say, some people say, oh, you know, he's really a liberal. And other people say, oh, you know, he's really conservative. You know, because they always attribute to your non-commitment to a political ideology as being uh, one, whatever they want you to be, <laughs> okay? And so CNN, I don't think, I think CNN is somewhere verging in the middle. You know, with MSNBC going out of their way to be lefties. And uh, we'll have a lot to talk about with that tonight with the firing of Megyn Kelly uh, by NBC today. Um, and whether that had to do with their being left wing as opposed to right wing. Although I never found that any major corporation... Uh, especially in the case of uh, MSNBC that's owned by Comcast. And I don't know that Comcast is left-wing, you know, but they're, they're uh, news operations, at least not the, not the 6.30 news with Lester Holt. That's just laughable. You know, when you're spending 10 minutes out of the 30 minutes you have allotted to you, which is really 21 minutes that's allotted to you after commercials, you spend 10 minutes on feel-good stories and clips you got from YouTube. I don't think that's really reporting the news every night and being a very valuable asset. But uh, certainly that newscast doesn't have a political ideology. But you go over to MSNBC and they do. So you could argue that, M that NBC is, in fact, a uh, you know uh, skewed towards the left wing. But anyway, I'm getting sick of, uh, of, of watching... Uh, what do you call it? Watching, um, uh, what, what, hold on a second, I've got to get rid of some stuff here, of watching um, uh, MSNBC and being pandered to. And, uh, you know, I just, I, I just don't, I don't like it. Don't like it one bit, okay? All right. Anyway, listen, uh, I'm opening the lines here if anybody wants to call. I always question why I even do this. 
And uh, Marjorie says to me, well, what else would you do? And I said, you're right. I'll go in there and do it again tonight. Uh, but sometimes I wonder. I wonder why I go put in the effort, you know, to do this. Uh, and uh, then I do the show, and it's a good show, and I go, well, that's why I do it, you know. Also because there's some people who like calling the show and talking to me, and we enjoy as a group uh, uh, kicking things around together. And, uh, yeah, so. The lines are open, by the way, in case nobody's noticed. Um, and you can call me. That would be nice, too. Mm. Mm -hmm. Ah, yes. Here comes, uh, here comes Phil Meyer. Um, the, the person everybody seems to hate. I get, more, I get more nasty stuff about you people saying, I can't listen to your show anymore because that loud mouth is on there. All right. So I'll give it to you now. You get a bomb. You get a bomb. You get a bomb. But I know it didn't come from Oprah. Oprah. Because they shorted the postage. She could afford the postage. Have you been thinking that joke up all day? Of course. Boy, you you that, that really was a, that was bad. Some bad writing. If you were a writer on my show, I'd fire you for that one. Well, just double my salary. You get a bomb. You it doesn't even scan right. You yeah, know. you get a Buick. You get a Buick. No, I understand that's where you're getting it from, but it just yeah. doesn't. You know, doesn't. Oh well, how doesn't would you play. do it? I wouldn't do it. There's but. not a there's not a joke there. You know, uh, it's um, uh, who was it that said the comedy is uh, tragedy plus time? And uh, I'm sorry, this only happened yesterday. If the bombs went off, no, no, don't then give, don't give me that. Be a tragedy. The bombs had one effect that they were meant to have, and that was to terrorize people. Are you terrorized? Yes, I live in New York. I don't know, you know. I mean, I don't, I'm not terrorized because I don't think they're going to send a bomb to my house. But if I were somebody like a public figure, I think I might be worried, yes. Uh, do you think that there's a possibility that the Democrats sent this out to is there themselves? A, well, is there a possibility that Trump sent them out to get these people? Probably. Yeah. So don't <laughs> give me those, you know, that kind of, uh, uh, you know. Uh, what can I call it? Bullshit. But Trump, Trump would have put the White House seal on it. Yeah, right. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, he would have been stupid enough to. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, or he would have been happy to say he did it. Uh, you know, but I mean, I just, um, um, yeah, time, the comedy is time, is tragedy plus time. You know, and uh, that's where we get the other joke, which is too soon. You know. Uh, you do a joke, nobody laughs. You go too soon. Yeah, yeah. You know. um, but the fact is, uh, you know, you can do a joke about the uh, about Abraham Lincoln's assassination. Go right ahead. It's sure. Very, well, very funny yeah. ones. How'd you enjoy the play, Mrs. Lincoln? Ta -da! You know. Yeah, like that, that. that's getting a little long in the tooth, though. Yeah, but you know, t tragedy plus time. You know, and I, I'm not saying that it has to be a long time. Uh, I, but, you know, there was a very funny thing that used to happen. Sometimes there'd be a tragedy, and the next mm -hmm. day there would be the same joke running around the country. Same that's joke. That's because of stockbrokers. Yeah, the stockbrokers, supposedly, that's where the, how they say it started. Stockbrokers in New York heard a joke, and they told all their friends on the phone they're talking to across the country, and then that spread from there. Before you know it, like, you remember when the, uh, when the uh, 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 shuttle blew up? Yeah. You know, and the next joke the next day was, so you know what happened? What? Freebasing. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. so the, so that's what so happens. So that, that's comedy plus time? Well, no, what I'm saying is that it's comedy plus, I don't know, this this quick thing that happened. But no, it wasn't time yet. I wouldn't, I even though I heard the joke, I, I, I did not tell it on the radio. Yeah, well, and you don't think that with the internet that this stuff uh, spreads just as quickly as it did with stockbrokers? I, I, I don't see as much of that. You know, you know, if you go online right now, I don't think you're going to see any jokes about the bombs. No, no, I haven't seen any yet. Yeah, only, only on your show. Only on my. Well, only <laughs> out of you. you know, <laughs> I know. I don't find anything funny about it. I think that it's. It's an act of terrorism, and it's meant to terrorize us. And whether the bombs go off or not, they have their effect. 
Well, I'm hoping that it has a different effect, actually. I'm hoping that maybe what it will do is it'll uh, unify the country and there'll be a little less uh, divisiveness and people working towards well, doing you, the right you, thing. Well, then what, what's the president going to do to help that? Well, you know, he he claims, I was listening to the uh, to uh, the TV tonight, and uh, uh, I think it was CNN that I was listening to, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, they were saying that the president is divisive and, uh, you know, came down on them with the fake news and all of these things. So CNN is doing the same thing to the president. So it, it's got to stop on both sides. Uh, so, you know, somebody's got to let up first. Well, and, I think uh, I think the person with the biggest uh, bully pulpit is the president, and he should be the one to stop first. And by stopping, I think he find, he'll find if he stops, there won't be a reason for CNN or anybody else to go after him. But he, he last night he went out and gave a speech, and immediately he was back on it again. You know, and he turns around and he blames the press, which it isn't the press's fault. I'm sorry, Phil. No matter what you think, the press is not complicit in any of this. The press reports the news. He doesn't happen to like the news. Your light is going on and off, uh, Jeff, because you've got a big light in back of you. you know? I'll move it around. Yeah, move it around so you're, you're not with that light. Right. Yeah. Is that better? Uh, well, yeah, uh, that's better. That's better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now you look uh, like yeah. you have a halo. You, know. you see, the the spurt <laughs> that you say that Ted Turner ah. noticed on uh, on other newscasts from Dan Rather. Yeah. The funny, I see that same kind of thing on the CBS guys. Uh, I don't watch MSNBC. I don't think I can get it. But uh, from the from the CBS people and from uh, the MS, not so much the MS, uh, the um, CNN. But uh, definitely from the CBS. Well, oh, I, I, I've watched the CB. I've watched CBS, and I find them to be pretty, pretty even-handed. To be honest with you, that's because you agree with. But them. so, but so, so is the NBC late news. The national stuff is tries to be as objective as it can be. Okay, even though I mean, look, you're never going to be a hundred percent objective because the people reporting the news all have their own individual opinions. But that doesn't mean they're going to necessarily not be able to divorce themselves from those opinions in order to report the news decently. All right? Some, some do. But, I mean, or CBS, if you, if you want to pick on CBS, those, that's not the people to pick on. I, but, I think that, and, and you don't think that they choose the stories that they want to put out uh, to be able to uh, deal with their agenda? You know, that, uh, for instance, Fox chooses different types. You see... The stories on Fox, not only do they have a different bent, but they're different stories. Whereas on uh, well, what they're doing, CBS, what, yeah, what they're doing though is they're avoiding stories that make the administration look bad. Right, and, and on and, the other and, hand, yeah, yeah. they're picking stories. No, that make they, the they may the other people may just feel they're reporting the news. Here's what the president said today, and they show some stupid thing he said. Because every time he opens his mouth, there's something there. I mean, hell, you know, my video that I like to play here of him with the toilet paper on his foot. My God, I would have, I would have run that as a loop on MSNBC if I had the ability. Well, don't yeah. squeeze the Charmin. Huh? <laughs> don't squeeze the Charmin. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, uh, uh, all I'm saying is that I think that... Uh, 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 you know that that uh, the, the, I think the news people would like to be as even-handed as possible, but when when they are being called fake news, when they are being assailed for their very craft, uh, don't you think that's going to make them feel somewhat bitter? Yeah, uh, yeah. They they did. You know, they report. Uh, I, is it 90% of what they report is negative against Trump? No, well, maybe 90% of what he does truly is negative. Well, how come they can find all this positive stuff on Fox where they don't no, find any no, positive they don't stuff find, on no, the No, I've watched Fox. They don't find positive stuff on Fox about him. In fact, I watched Fox today, and they had somebody on who was absolutely savaging Trump. Uh, yeah. you know, but, uh, I, uh, and, and they, they have their, their problems with Trump as well. Uh, not Hannity. Hannity sucks his dick every night, you know, uses the same attorney. 
Yeah. Uh, hey, I don't uh, want to get too far away from Trump, but I heard today that there was another bomb scare at one Columbus. Uh, is it Columbus, sir? Yeah, but uh, I think it turned out not to be. They they were just uh, worried that a package they got was questionable, and they they called the the bomb squad. The bomb squad came out, got rid of, got everybody out of the building, and yeah. then looked at it and deemed that it wasn't part of the same thing. That it was and then, some strange in, package. In a restaurant, there was also a backpack that they didn't know who it belonged to. Well, and that yeah. caused another yeah, this, scare. Th this is not the modus operandi of this particular whoever's doing it. I mean, they sent these envelopes out and they all look exactly alike, okay? Uh, but that doesn't mean that copycats aren't going to come along. And copycats who are far more dangerous than the guy who built these, bo built these bombs, which weren't all that effective because they, a lot of them didn't, they didn't blow up. Uh, and there but, was explosive in it, but there was also some sort of inert pow powder that, uh, that was harmless. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, the fact of the matter is that that uh, uh, these, uh, you know, uh, what 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 these were meant to do was these were meant to terrorize people, and sure enough, I mean, it it terrorized. It did a good people. job. It did a good job of terrorizing mm -hmm. people, and and well, it should, um, and and it's kind of sad, you know, that we live in a time where this kind of thing happens, and. Uh, that we can't just have an election and have people in good spirits, uh, uh, de you know, make their case and and have a good, now, healthy election. We don't have healthy elections anymore. They're do sick. you think that this is possibly more Russian interference? No. 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 Why? Because, because they I, used I, American I, postage? I don't think it's Russian interference. This is not what they do. This is not the kind of scenario that they... They, they're far more covert about it. They want you to feel that Donald Trump won the election fair and square and that they had no meddling in it, and that's why they do it covertly. They're not going to do something which is so obvious. All I'm saying is, you know, you could say there was the possibility that Trump had people send these bombs out, you know, because these were all people, by the way, being critical of Trump. Yeah, that's why I uh, wonder if, you see, what the Russians are trying to do is they're trying to sow, sow discord in our election process. And uh, so, you know, one minute they're, they're, I'm they're not going to, I'm not going to discount your, your possibility, but I'm going to say that I don't think it is possible because it's not the way the Russians have operated. You know, it's yeah. not been the yeah. way they've done this stuff. They have other more covert ways of doing it where you don't even see what's happening. You know. Yeah, but uh, you know this one uh, gained. It was you know there's only a couple of weeks left to the midterms, and this one certainly uh, created some uh, issues uh, amongst the uh, the voters. Yeah, but and the even question the is the question is who does and, and and we and you know this is a, a good question. I ask all of you this question, Brian and Jeff, because it shouldn't just be a show of you mm -hmm. and I. Uh, you know, uh, who is going to benefit from this thing happening? Is it going to be that the Democrats are going to go, hey, you tried to bomb uh, Obama, I'm going to make sure I go to the polls, or is it is it going to hurt the Democrats? You know, who's, uh -huh. who's it going to help, who's it going to hurt? And so then you have to ask, would it be the Russians, because who do they want to help? Yes, Jeff. Well, it's very hard for me to understand what the Russians want to do but but i if if there was anybody who would benefit from this it's probably going to be uh trump because he's looking to to show uh that there's that there's problems uh, against uh democrats yeah but you know he's been for weeks he's been harping on the fact that the uh, democrats are a mob and that uh, they're out to do violence, and yet it is very obvious that whatever violence is happening right now, uh, these bombs probably came from the from the right. Uh, so uh, well, that's good enough for him, huh? I, I think that's we're good enough for him to make a cre uh, a negative. Hmm. I think we're missing the point. I, I I don't think the Russians really cared who got elected as long as it caused discord. Now. By Trump getting elected, what they've done is they've split the country in half. Now, 
uh, uh, this uh, new round of uh, things, this these terror uh, things, where you know no one got killed, but everybody's scared. Now, uh, if if it goes in the Democrats' favor, uh, it, all it does is continue to cause discord. I don't think that they really cared who got elected as long as they divided the country. And the one that would divide the country the most was Trump. Because if Hillary got elected, yeah, there'd be some stalemate in the, in the Congress and, and so forth. But, you know, the Republicans wouldn't have done well, you to know, Hillary uh, what... The, what the Democrats are doing. I'm not sitting here saying that I think that Trump uh, had somebody send out these bombs. But there's always that possibility. Just like there's always the possibility that the prince of Saudi Arabia asked for Khashoggi to be murdered. Uh, you know, oh no, he wouldn't do that. Well, you know, people who are in power are capable of anything because we don't know them well enough. And no matter how, what you think of Donald Trump, you don't know him well enough. But... Uh, the, the Russians, if they helped Trump to get elected, the only thing that they were looking to do was to be divisive. And, and it worked. Mm -hmm. And so if you turn around and say, well, now there's another election and they want to cause as much discord as possible. Yeah. This is working. Yeah, right. And, uh, you know, hey, how you doing? I, I, don't, I don't see him yet. He hasn't, oh, shown, John. Up, hasn't shown up on our show. There he is. Okay. Uh, but all I'm saying is, is that, uh, you know, and I'm not, I don't, I don't know if Trump had anything to do with it. I, you know, he probably had nothing to do with it, but there's always that small possibility. Okay. Because I don't trust the man and I think he's capable yeah. of anything. All right. Because I think he's a totally dishonest human being has been all his life. Why should he stop now? You know? So did you send them out, uh, Alex? Yeah, right. You know? I, I sent those. I admit it. I sent those you know, bombs out. Most of them came out of New York. You know? No, they didn't. They came out of Florida. Well, they were returned. No, they came. To they Florida. came out of Florida. They believe. They seem yeah. to be tracking all the deliveries to post offices and to postal centers and so on, to the Florida area. Ted Kaczynski, they said, actually, when he did this type of stuff, yeah. went to well, the, uh, first, drove to San Francisco. First of all, the bombs worked. Okay, so you got to <laughs> hand it to a Ted. Smart guy. You got to hand it to Ted well, Kaczynski. You know, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, he he made him work. So yeah. Hey John, how you doing? Oh, I'm in a fucking foul mood. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for joining us. <laughs> yeah. Happy, 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 yeah, happy, sure. happy, joy, joy. Yeah. Well, you should take, <laughs> take what Alex <laughs> takes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Why are you, you such a bad Alex? Mood? I need it. Yeah, uh, it's called Gap of Pen, you, but such a you, don't, move? you don't need it, you know. I, you know, er, everything we get on the mainstream news is utter crock of bullshit. You know, I'm sorry. Um, you know, uh, there's, this, uh, there's this focus on uh, the bombs, you know, and yet we're not focusing on uh, U.S. Uh, bombing of innocent, uh, you know, supporting the war in Yemen. Uh, mm -hmm. Kids are starving, dying. Yeah, but We're you got to you got to remember you got to remember, you gotta remember you something. Know. You got to remember something, John. The American yeah. public uh, has a short attention span and can only follow one story at a time. Uh, and so, therefore, I mean, you could all of a sudden you could say, with all this bombing, what happened to all those uh, four th seven thousand people coming up from South America? You know, they're still coming up from South America, but somehow today we haven't been reporting on that. Yeah, you, you know, I know what's happening. They're saying that the Mexicans are giving them jobs and they're staying in Mexico. <laughs> no, <laughs> well, that's I mean, what's happened to a lot well, of well, the that, characters. Well, the, we'll see how many wind up getting here, but. Uh, yeah, that yeah is, that's uh, that would be very that, that would be very nice if true. Okay, that's that's what the news is reporting. Yeah, and now what Phil just said wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, I think uh, getting back to the news, I think it's all a distraction. I mean, there's there's other things going on that affect all of us that is not being reported, and that is related to economics. That that's related to the financial scam right. that is Wall Street and. Uh, this phony trade war of Trump, which is really a currency war, it, it's not about uh, trade. It's about uh, devaluing the currency of China. And China's screwed, you, you know, and they're holding uh, major, major 
uh, treasuries, uh, you know, dollars and U.S. And, you know, just this whole Trump war, it, you know, is such a phony damn thing. And I see all the main headlines as a diversion from John, the, the real yeah. the shit yeah. that's going down. Are we paying Meaning, the- you know, a recession is on uh, an, a big recession, bigger than 08 is on the horizon and it's going to yes, hit us. Yes. Uh, John, are we paying the Chinese back in yuan or in dollars? In yuan. They're called yuan, Phil. Oh. A renminbi, whatever you want to call it. You know. uh, well, RMB is the other Because I wonder, term, why yeah. would he want to devalue the, the yuan? If no, he's, he's, too stupid. It- he's too stupid to see it that way. You know, he's pandering to base uh, instincts of uh, uh, a segment of I- ignorant Americans. I don't include you in that, Phil. But, uh, you know, where oh, are please the Please include him in where that. Are these hey, uh, it's just that if we're paying back the debt in dollars, it doesn't make any sense. And then if they devalue we're their not currency, paying any we're not debt. paying any we're debt back. Increasing the debt. We keep well, increasing yeah. it. But let's, let's say... Uh, we buy Chinese product, and if their product, if their value of their currency is cheaper, then their product will be cheaper here in comparison to U.S. dollars. So it just makes sense for them. That's the problem that Trump is having with these guys, is that they're it, it, keeping the value of the yuan lower than it is to in, influence our market. I don't right? know. I, I think it's... You know, I, I think it's uh, the burden of the problem is on the U.S., not on China. I mean, China, we buy tremendous amount, trillions of dollars worth of shit from them. And uh, look at Apple. Apple is now worth a trillion fucking dollars. When has a U.S. Yeah, company ever? Yeah, same with Amazon. You, you know, and, and most of the iPhone products are made in China. So... You know, I mean, if we want to start screwing around with China, we're we're just calling down horrendous shit that's going to uh, affect us, and we're already seeing that by happen. The, by in the way, US the, by the way, we've been joined by the man in the dark, who happens to be the <laughs> voice of Gabnet, uh, Rob Alfano. Hello, Rob. Hey, everybody. What's you've been, going on? You've been listening to our little discussion, or are you just uh, joining in here? Yeah, I've been listening. Yeah, I actually felt I was. I actually fell asleep yeah. waiting, and then I'm like, oh. <laughs> well, you fell asleep during my monologue, is what you're saying. Actually, I listened yeah. to your whole monologue and fell asleep right at the very. <laughs> yeah, end. Oh, okay, all right. What, what, when I started talking, <laughs> it's okay, I yeah. just, I, I just all of a sudden, you know, I've been, I've been. It's been a really, really busy week. I just got back from Orlando why, last why, why night. Why don't you? Can you kind of get that light away from the picture? Maybe, you, maybe we'll get you. A no, more it's still, you know still what? So I don't. Know, yeah, I don't know how to. This is the, my Mac, and I have no idea how to adjust the camera on uh, a Mac. Yeah, I don't think Slide you can. The- Take the just angle. Get a flashlight. Take no, I know that. Flashlight. But see, it's no different. Oh, you right? see, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's 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 fat. It's he just, set. He just doesn't have enough light. Yeah. I have no idea how to adjust um, the camera on a Mac. Well, let's think of him this evening as film noir. Okay. Film noir. There you go. <laughs> uh, hey, Phil, don't forget November 10th, the Dragon 10. House. Yeah, absolutely. Keys are? Uh, Keys, yeah. Keys are? Why don't, you call, right. why don't you call each other about stuff like that? This is, <laughs> this is not a well, we do. telephone. He's, plug, he's plugging uh, the event. Well, and right. Everybody plugs shit, man. This is good. I'd rather watch... Uh, you know, fighters pound each other yeah. than the stupid uh, anyway, idiot let me get, let me get back. Let me get right back bullshit. to Rob. So, Rob, you've been working your ass off, right? Just been really busy, yeah. yeah. Flew yeah. out to Orlando on Monday morning and, you know, two and a half days of busy, busy conference and then flew home last night. And when you asked in Orlando what time it was, probably somebody said, It's 10.54. Good night, pal. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> now, Rob, you were in Florida. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you, did you mail anything when you were there? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wasn't in Miami. Uh, it's a short drive. Yeah. Fourteen hours. You know. I heard there were two bombs with at Maxine Waters' office. Uh, no, it was. Um, 
uh, who got two bombs? They're, they're all fake bombs. They're not a detonatable bombs. No, they are know? detonatable. Just bullshit wait, bombs. Wait, wait, Even no, the alarm no, clock no, hold that on they a had second, in there hold didn't on have second. the alarm function. Hold on a second. Yeah. The, the, the bombs were explodable. They exploded one of them. The CNN yeah, well, bomb. there, there was, but, but the, uh, the uh, set-off mechanism. The was set off, it, yeah, well, I mean, it could have been that the guy didn't do a good job of making a bomb that would go off. But what I'm saying is, and there was no reason for a clock to be in there because you don't know how long the mail's going to take to get to CNN. Yeah, hell, yeah. You know. see, see, that makes it a fake bomb. Well, and, it's and not. It's to no, give it no, some validity, no, no, no. It, it was not a PET it, it, or some it, kind of explosive. John, it was not a fake bomb. It was a bomb that was incapable of going off, but it wasn't a fake bomb because they took the one that went to uh, Soros's place and they took it out into a field or whatever and they detonated it and it blew up. Yeah, of course, if you put an explosive in a fake no, bomb. No, they didn't put an explosive in it, John. John, they didn't put it. John, John, listen to me. They blow it up listen on purpose. No, they didn't use an explosive to blow it up. They how, could they, they, how could they blow it up? They detonated it. Did you know that flour is an explosive? You oh, can go Jesus to Safeway. Christ. Or Dude, people are driving me fucking crazy. Don't you, you know? Don't you fucking know that they exploded <laughs> it? They detonated it because yes, they wanted to. I, I, I'm, I'm they agreeing use, with that. But they, it's, they use a, a it's a fake. What do you give me with flowers? That you can detonate stuff with oh, flour. Yes. Fuck that. Flour, who cares? Who cares? Who gives it? Who gives a shit, John? That's not your. That's not your main to the conversation. Conversation we're having. What, what, Brian? I said, and your asshole can be a makeshift flamethrower if you <laughs> fart into a lit pack. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's right. That's right. Hey, Thank you, Brian. Brian. As you get older, you'll learn never to trust a fart. Oh, I already do that now. <laughs> Yeah. Believe me, off. believe me, my wife has been on some kind of laxative her doctor has given her. And <laughs> and and she farts so much, I swear to you, she has hurt the ozone layer. Okay. You can bottle that stuff and sell it on the internet. Yeah. I'd buy a bottle of her fart gas. But you know, it doesn't matter it whether uh, I'd pay twenty bucks. It for doesn't it. matter whether a bomb went off or not. It's still terrorism because it was top. it was sent to terrorize people. That that's how the Sultan of Brunei made his money. See, if I was going to terrorize the Democratic Party, I'd se I'd send them fart gas bombs, not you know you know gunpowder bombs. No, or we, the fart the shit. fart joke was two jokes ago. Anyway, well, now if I wanted to terrorize the Democratic Party people, I'd send them uh, signatures of about a hundred thousand people advocating for universal health care. That's how yeah. scared the shit right. of the Democratic Thank you, Brian. Like, Thank you, man. Thank or you. term limits, or that even. Oh, absolutely. Term Any, all these fuckers need term limits. Yeah. What, what, were, what was your take on the bombs, uh, Rob? Or didn't you care? <sighs> I'm just flabbergasted by this society that we live in and we're, you know, I'm Mr. Negativity. I just think that we're, we're just nearing the end of, of this, the, whatever we have left of this country is, is gone. And, and tr it's, you know, I don't care what you say, Phil, it's just pretty, I, I, we need a president to be a president, not to do what Donald Trump is doing. You could, you can, you can say all you want. Yes, he was not responsible for those bombs going off, but it's some damn coincidence that every one of the people on that list of who got him were people who were up against Trump. If and Trump, if Trump, Trump wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on a second, say, hold on a second, Phil. Good right. point, Rob, because if if people, if if you wanted to say that Donald Trump has an enemies list, and you were to say who would be on that list, right. The people who are the targets of these bombs would be on that list. Right. Yeah. I, I just want to say one thing about negativity, Rob, is that, you know, no matter how bad things are, whether it's Trump or Maxine Waters or any of these things, uh, nothing stays bad forever. There's ups and downs. It's been that way for thousands of years, and it will continue to be that way. I disagree and with you. I disagree and with I, you, too. I disagree with you. We are eroding the hell out of... Everything that we held dear in this country. You could read a newspaper well, Phil, from 150 Phil, Phil, years Phil, ago. Phil, Phil, when, when this election took place and Donald Trump won and everybody was going apoplectic, I think even Patrick here, who tries to be reasonable, will agree that I kind of took this position about, well, you know, the wonderful thing about America is nobody can 
ruin it. You know, not one person can be elected to office and ruin it. Maybe they can set us back for a couple of years. But after the next no, guy gets in, well, you know, no. but, but wait a minute. But I have a different opinion now. Well, I, I look at life. Wait like a minute. Victor wait a minute. Frankel What's your does. opinion now, Alex? What's your opinion now? Well, my opinion now is that that there's been been some unalterable uh, moves in this uh, with this administration that are going to come back to bite America in the ass for the next yeah, fifty right. years. For the next That's fifty right. years, if we don't turn it around. Soon. How do you turn it around? Well, how do you fix the Supreme Court? Yeah. It's forever tainted. There's yeah. nothing wrong with it. There's nothing hey, wrong with you it. See, you see this, Boston? This is what you got to do in this country. And I'm not talking about the Red Sox. I'm talking about Lexington Green. Um, that's what that's what we need in this fucking I country. You're referencing the Tea Party. No, yeah, the a real Tea, tea party, party, not, not tea the dumb party. shits that nine, took the tea tea party. party. Patrick, like Patrick is called. Patrick, what are, what are some of your your opinions on all of this? Nobody wants my opinion yeah, on that. I this, want so. your opinion because you know, I. I heard you screaming at Phil last night about what aboutism, what aboutism, and I'm not going to take that. So I'm just going to sit here, and I'm interested in taking in the conversation, not to add to it. All I have is what aboutism, apparently. So well, I don't I'm, know that you, you, your stuff. I, I, I don't remember it as being much about what about isms. In other words, yours was always kind of like. Uh, far, I, I, let me put it this way. I consider you a reasonable conservative. Yeah, but I'm, right? I agree with what Phil was saying last night. So, yeah. therefore, I'm automatically not reasonable because I look at what Maxine Waters has said and what Hillary Clinton has said very recently about getting and an Pelosi. So, so. And Pelosi. He doesn't need your help, Phil. <laughs> I want is to say what about ism, what about ism. Well, you know what? I will concede this. Trump did indeed start this, but did the Democrats have to follow up and play, well, we're going to get in everybody's face too, and then I don't want to hear anybody bitching about what happened, because whether it was some goof-ass Democrat that's trying to make attention or a right-wing nut, he's a terrorist, or she's a terrorist, or the group is a terrorist group, period. End of story, and I don't give a shit who it is, and both sides are to blame, and I don't want to hear somebody say, no, both sides aren't to blame, because Maxine Waters was telling all of her people at the gasoline station that this, that that, get in their face. Hillary was reiterating deplorable and that we can't get along with anybody until the administration changed. Well, I, I, so, you know what? You got it on your side. We got it on our side. It's the same fucking problem. And you know what? Nobody's right. Well, you know something, Patrick? You're, in a way, you're right, but in a way, I don't agree with you. Here's where I don't agree with you. Uh, I think that what Maxine Waters was calling for was something I've often said is important, that if you see a politician someplace and you're in a place where that person is, uh, this is a very public person who, who, who votes on things for you and that you should let them know how you feel about what they're doing. Uh, and you, and they and they should feel that you know that they have to answer to their very constituency, and that you you know it's important. And I think that's essentially what Maxine Waters was saying. No. Don't shut. Don't shut. No. What do you mean? No. You're reading it like you want to read it, Phil. No. She. It's you've got to have civility. There's nothing wrong with telling your uh, 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 pe uh, your uh, representatives how you feel. But there's one way of doing it and another way of doing it, and, and, they're not, and the civility has gone out the door on both Six, sides. You know, 65 percent of the American people want uh, uh, Medicare for all, and no, no fucking Democrat or Republican is, is uh, in favor of that. No, the they, DNC it, it's not just came out opposed to Medicare for all, so fuck okay. them. I'm an equal opportunity hater. I hate the Democrats and the Republicans, and I think we need something different in this country. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Okay, hold on. Some people have had their hands up. I know him personally now. 
I get along with this guy. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. What we have to do. Forty percent of the well, time. We're, we're well, some, each other. somebody has to, uh, Paul. But let me go to let me. Uh, uh, Rob's had his hand up. So my big problem with I agree with a lot of what you said, Patrick. But here's my problem, and and I've never you know look I I I have I rarely agree with the conservative point of view. There are times when I feel that I'm I'm not as left on certain issues. But my big problem is we have a president who doesn't take the moment to be presidential when stuff like this happens. And that's my problem. And you do not have Republicans who want to stand up and check this guy. Right. So that's my big fear. Yeah, is, the Republicans are kiss asses. They're, yeah, they're, they're it's, not, not, it's not up to them to check them. It's up to the yes, people to vote them out. We have three. It's up to the, Hold it's on up to Phil. the people to vote well, him we out. Can't, Bill, we can't vote we him out when you're doing three. dirty tricks and gerrymandering. Right. We have three <laughs> we have three three parts of the government and they're equal. You know and the they're supposed to have a checks and balance against each other. They don't work Trump thinks they work for him. Yeah, well, that's true. They yeah. are right. let, let This me, is why I despise okay. this man and everything that comes out of his mouth, I don't care. He has everything is a means to an end with him. He he couldn't come out and say anything about these bombs because it didn't politically fit his position so he has to ignore it and he, he could have taken that rally last night instead of blaming the media yeah and right. blamed himself Good point but the Good rally yeah, okay okay now wait a minute hold on a second there are people with their hands up here okay All right. so let me go to tony and then to patrick yeah you know i was really thinking about this like the whole thing the bad vibes with the whole country and i'm going to roll this whole clock back i think i don't want to sound like negative, but I really think, you know, as a person 49 years old, I think the country went down the shitter after the 70s. I think if, I really think the, I think Abby Hoffman had it right. I watched a documentary with Max. You know what he said? He's the only time you get changed. Uh, you're, you wrong. You're, you're wrong, Tony. Yeah, right. You're wrong. You're, you're wrong. Mechanic, hold hold on a second. You're wrong, Tony. This country has had its problems long before that. You weren't yeah. around in the 50s for the McCarthy hearings and for the House on American Activities. I feel like I've gotten my tax worth. Wait a minute. Let me, hold on forth. a second. Let me finish. Uh, you weren't around for that, and I saw a very ugly time back then. It was horrible. It was disgusting. I, I'll give you that, but here's a question, though. I can't, I can't elaborate it on because I live. But look how I'm living. Look at this. They don't want to raise minimum wage, they don't want to do anything. The Democrats seem like they only want to wave the flag when it benefits them to get back in power. We we have Trump. You know what? I you're right. I can't elaborate on something because I wasn't born. But you know what I think the people are saying? I'm tired of this shit. Right. Right. That's right. why Trump was elected to begin yeah. with. Okay. Okay. Tired of it. Patrick's had his hand up now for a while. I don't want him to lose it. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to respond to Rob um, with the thing that came here. Not taking responsibility. One of the things that did bother me yesterday with his initial statement um, when he was still at the White House, not at the, I didn't see any of the rally. But one thing that I thought was very off putting and very unpresidential is his remarks stated high level current yeah. and former officials. He didn't even have the courtesy to name the former president, Clinton, Obama, or the former Secretary of State, Clinton. The other people, John Vernon, who gives a fuck? Eric Holder, nobody gives a shit. But at least those three people should have been named out of respect, if, or even Hillary didn't have to be. How about just Obama and Clinton, the president? You know, and that's what I found off-putting with that, and very un unpresidential and un I would say ungentlemanly like regardless of office that you're holding. So mm -hmm. Yeah. He's the president and his words count. I mean he does. And he's giving people permissions to act well, out. That that's what a, my argument was. Yeah, last like night, Rob. Wait a minute. Hold on a second, John. Let me finish what I'm saying. Uh, uh, I, I said this last night, and Phil took umbrage with me on it, but I said the one thing you don't do, you know, your job as president, your number one job is to keep Americans safe. 
And when you put them in harm's way by giving people a sense of permission for their bad actions and for actions that might hurt other people, then you're not being presidential and you're not doing the job you're supposed to be doing. Yes, Phil? Uh, there's one thing that Trump isn't, and that's presidential. Uh, he doesn't fit that mold. Uh, you know, that's just not him. He's a, he's a hood, hoodlum from Queens with a lot of money. He got elected. He's the president. The, the agenda that he had, I, I agree with. The way he uh, goes about putting his agenda forward, uh, I'm, yeah, granted, it pisses off a lot of people. I don't like it. But I wish, I wish that you know, he, once elected, would have changed his way of doing business. But he didn't. If he doesn't get elected next time, uh, it would be poor for the country because I think he's doing a good thing for the economy and, and our position Really? In the world. Really? But, How much money have you... Uh, well, you don't have stock. Uh, I've lost a couple of thousand bucks already because of right, this moron. Right, but uh, my business has increased. Well, no, I don't, uh, I don't because, give a shit about that because as a well, that's person... that's how I make my end No, living. but I don't give a shit about that because my <laughs> way I earn a living is I have stocks. And when my and well, I, I guess have you lost, picked the but, wrong way to earn a living. Between well, no, in your old age, that's the kind of living you pick because you don't get jobs any longer, Phil. Well, you could have bought an annuity. What do you, what do you think? What do you think I have? But I, 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 I have stock. Yeah. The, 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 the stock. Those are my. Have the right idea. I have stocks. Those are my annuities. And uh, in the last couple of weeks, between my stock and Sirius, my Vanguard stock, I've lost close to three million, uh, three thousand dollars. Do you do you gamble, Alex? No. Well, what do you think the stock market? I, is? Yeah, the stock market is. Uh, because I, a lot of I, I, but, but, what, what, what do you think? What do you think? Yeah. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think my mattress is, Phil? Something that could burn down in a fire. I think something that could <laughs> burn down in a fire. You know, there there are very little things you can do with your money except just put it in a bank, which is a waste of time. Well, or if you would have bought real estate, like I told you in 1980, uh, you well, I done well, I didn't. But all yeah. I'm saying is I've lost many thousands of dollars in the last uh, couple of months. And the president goes, oh, our, our economy is terrific. No, it's not. The stock market is fucking tanking, Phil. That's yeah. yeah. Hey, it's gone down. I it's gone down estate. almost two thousand points in the last two weeks. And and I lost, good, I've I've lost like hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars and gained hundreds of thousands of dollars in real estate. You know, it's all about timing. You get in, you get out. Uh, it's about timing. I don't do that. And, I, I I put my money somewhere where it can build. That's it. Well, you know. Then, and, well, and, and, well, Phil, look market. at the That's big the short. Answer excellent film uh the big short you know yeah. where these fucking okay. bastards make money on uh people losing their homes you know right. that's uh, what uh, real estate uh, uh, patrick has is. patrick has his hand up um one thing i did want to add to what phil said is regardless of whether any of us voted for donald trump or not he is our president and i find it hilarious when people say not my president because my response is always do you live in this country are you a citizen of this country if you are he is your president because obama i didn't vote for him yet i referred to him as the president and my president because i live in this fucking country like him or not you hey, well, Jeff Davis, Jeff Davis didn't think Lincoln was their president, and like uh, 14 southern states didn't think Lincoln was their president, and this fucking guy is not my president. Well, you know, that, that's, well, that's uh, here, let me let me say you know it. Let me say I mean, it's I, it, Patrick. That's a kind of a play on words in a way. Yes, he's the president of the United States, but there is nothing about Donald Trump that represents me and what I stand for and what I believe. So it's sort of a, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a speak. He is not my president. He doesn't represent anything. He, I, if, if I think black, he thinks white. If I think left, he thinks right. There is nothing about Donald Trump that I respect. Well, also, if I have, so if this I is have, what I mean. yes, I, I know he's yeah. the president of the United States and I live in this country. If I have somebody I know who is morally reprehensible, 
I'm not going to hang out with that Thank person. you. Thank and you. And I'm not going to respect that You've got to earn respect. Person. Exactly. And he doesn't earn it even yes. when shit goes bad, like last <laughs> night, when he could have gotten on on that stage and he could have been somber <laughs> and said, you know what, maybe there's too much rhetoric going on, and I'm guilty of it as well. The, the media is guilty he, of well, it. He, 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 he's, he's incapable of any kind yeah, of introspection. Exactly. This guy is such a fucking narcissist. Exactly. Yeah, he, he's, he's a psychopath that. and a narcissist. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. that's why I, 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 I have never despised the president, George Bush, none, no other president. But, well, but I despise. Uh, this I, you know, I would ask, I would ask Patrick if he feels he's a narcissist or he's a this or he's a that. And but, I believe, but it's already been established that Patrick was not a person who voted for Donald Trump. He's a he conservative. Was eat shit, he said, if, uh, if he, <laughs> he would rather eat for shit for first. Like yeah, that. but yeah. you know his own scat. Can yeah. I say one thing though? Yeah, sure, Tony. To back up Patrick, which I agree with Patrick, and I'm not, you know, I I, I search Facebook, and I and I, I don't like Trump. I, I don't even know the guy, but I can see he's an asshole. But whatever the case is, <laughs> but let's be honest. How well do we know Hillary Clinton and Obama? Well, it's Clinton's pretty, an asshole. For hey, God listen, sake. listen. I uh, if you listen to this program for any amount of time, and I think Patrick will <laughs> agree with this, uh, I was no fan of Hillary Clinton's. You know, yeah. and and, I, 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 and and in fact, uh, when yeah. he was in, oh, when I he was wasn't. president, I was somewhat critical of, of Obama because I didn't feel Can he I was a tough enough. I remember on Sirius you being that way, Alex. Yeah, yeah. Can I pose a you question? You talking to Christina? You, if yeah. you look at social media, like yeah, I glance at it. You don't think there's people out there who hate Trump just to push their own agenda to make some cash? No, because it's, no. it's in vote. No, to hate no. I look. I, I I think there's a genuine disdain against Trump, and I think that it it does. It isn't the Trump today. It goes back to the Trump in New York. You know, it's the Trump of the, him, of the of the of the central team. of the Central Park. Yeah, the Central Park Five or Seven or what? Were, how many yeah. were they? Uh, nine. Five. Five, Central Park five. five, in which he took out full page ads saying, let's bring back the death let's penalty kill to kill these guys. And they hadn't even gone on trial yet. And now yeah. he's sitting there going, you know, we, we when, we're, when it comes to Saudi Arabia, when it comes to Russia, you, you're not you shouldn't be uh, uh, guilty until proven so. Well, then what was he doing taking out ads asking for these guys to be lynched? You know, Thank so, you. so this Thank guy's you. this guy's <laughs> assholeness yeah. goes way back, you know, right. Right. The fact that he you wouldn't just don't get the that fact, fact that his time. father wouldn't rent to you know to Puerto Ricans and uh, yeah. I think yeah. he had uh, certain things on his properties where you couldn't rent to blacks, and you know this guy was always a douchebag. He was known as a douchebag. His right. hero was Roy Cohn, who was the world's right. biggest douchebag. And Roy Cohn yeah, was but... his attorney. Roy Cohn was his attorney when he tried to get into yeah. the NFL. The NFL, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying he's a nice guy, but what I'm trying to say is I think since he's been in, I think this on both sides, you could see. I don't care what yeah, I agree well, with you. I look, look, look you could blame like you could blame both sides, but I think he has brought a lot of this out in his opponents because the vit the that. vitriol he spews against them gets right. them angry. Why do you and think CNN like, comes out again? Really yeah, uh, 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 why, yeah, why do you th ask that question again, Rob? Because t why Tony do you think CNN well. attacks him the way they do? Because no other president has ever attacked one news. He couldn't even mention CNN oh. yesterday getting the bomb. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's ridiculous. Uh, he, he, I know, it's uh, interesting. I'll tell you that, though. Oh, it's I don't know, I don't know what know. to believe with the media anymore, to tell you the truth. Well, no, well, I well, 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 you know, know Italy, pushes agenda. Italy had their version of Trump, you know, Silvio Berlusconi. Yeah. Oh, no, they had their he version was, of Trump. He was you know. called Mussolini. <clears throat> yeah. He, uh, I, Trump reminds me very much of Mussolini, the way he yeah, stands exactly. there, the way he folds yeah. his arms, the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yep, there we go. You could either be doing know. Trump or doing Mussolini. I can't tell. See, I kind of agree with Patrick, though. I think people really are just show. I think Patrick's on to something. I think people just don't want to show any respect to anything. Mm -hmm. I think there's yeah, but the respect like is earned. That the Democrats are a pile of shit too. Yeah, I agree. With you. I see. I kind yeah. of like. Yeah. 
I don't. Well, know, don't, don't know. I don't. I, uh, uh, John, I'll have to. I'll have to. Uh, dis hold on a second, Rob. I'll disagree with you on that, John. I think that the the uh, Democrats are less douchebags than the Republicans on a whole. Well, right. let's, hope be Be let's hope Beto, Beto O'Rourke beats that uh, dumb shit Cruz in Texas. Let's see how that goes. You know, Beto O'Rourke happen. is... I mean, Ted Kennedy... Well, he's, he's it, running really... It's close, very close, you know? Phil. It's very yeah. close. It's very and it's going to be. Listen, it's one of those six points. It, no, it, it, it it's one of those races that we don't know how it's going to turn out till it till it's been counted. Can I say? Here's you know, a perfect example. You ready for this? What? The Democrats lauded Ted Kennedy. He left the woman to drown to death right. and went home to sleep. That's and right. And they think he's a hero. Yeah. You're right. Exactly. Right. right. It's bizarre. Well, they hate Trump. This guy left her to die. All right. Yeah. Now, how about this theory, Tony, that you probably didn't hear? What? The Ted Kennedy didn't strong. even know she was in the back of the car. That he oh, was yeah. that he was in the car with another woman, and she got out and he got out, but they didn't know she was asleep, drunk in the back seat of the car. I mean, and he still. So now, if that, that if Mary, that's the case, know? wait a minute. If that's the case, uh, Tony, now what do you think of Ted Kennedy? Yeah, but I don't know what's, uh, what's okay. Right okay, what's so what you're doing is you're spewing rumors. Uh, the Ted fact was banging. Doesn't look good though. Huh. He doesn't look like a good guy. Well, no, I mean, I, but but it wasn't like he he knew that somebody was oh, left in the back seat the of the devil, car. But the argument the like argument is, is, yeah, is at least, is at least it, when Democrats are piles of shit, they still manage to do good things. Kennedy looked out for the elderly. Lyndon Johnson helped uh, 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 kill uh, sixty thousand Americans in Vietnam, yeah. and yet the guy gave us Medicare and Medicaid. So you can't, it's not just a black and white thing. Exactly. I mean, but the, the Republicans are just completely eroding any kind of social contract that uh, Democrats have set up for the benefit of the people. Nixon they, gave us the 55 mile an hour speed limit. Uh, <laughs> he gave the get, he? Nixon gave us the EPA, mm -hmm. too. Nixon yeah. did a lot of good things, except not for Vietnam. He opened, he opened up China. Fucking over Chile. He opened up China. Yeah. yeah. Which, well, no, by the way, yeah, no, no, Demo thing, no Democrat could have done that. Yeah, I was that. thinking the same thing. Is that really a good thing that he opened Opening up China? Up China. <laughs> well, really? the fact was he could have never well, opened up China. Target and uh, Walmart. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> sorry. What the fuck can be built? And, I, I, and this is why, you know, short-term pain, I don't know how short, I don't know how long short-term is defined as, as far as uh, lowering uh, stock value and whatnot with these tariffs. But what the fuck can be built in Beijing that's so much more beneficial that can't be built in Birmingham or Pittsburgh or or, or fucking uh, oh, or, or Rob lives in Virginia? Slave labor. Slave that's labor. Yeah, they don't want to pay. No, well, to begin with, China is it has a big competitor in that field of manufacture, and no, that's no. that's India. Only because you, we allow them to you, be. You forget about that. India is very big into manufacturing. And we allow them and, to and be. And they too. do they do have a cheaper workforce. There's no question about that. And that's one of the reasons they can. But they they're also jobs that oddly enough, as much as we say we'd like to bring them back to America, that Americans don't want to do. Americans would go crazy on an assembly line now. That's because we've been generationally conditioned to, to, to not like that. But there are people, yeah. a lot of people what I I'm know saying personally, is, who just aren't built genetically you know, to be the, service sector. The, the, biggest, the biggest company yeah, in true. China that does this manufacturing, I'm trying to remember What's their that name wrong? now. Wait, but but that's true what you said. No, but true. I what, agree with some people aren't built to be what, I, what I'm saying, though, is that in China, uh, the biggest company that's over there uh, building stuff, I'm trying to remember the name of the company now, Foxconn? Foxconn is building a plant, or supposed to be building a plant in the United States. The president had the Foxconn guy there, and they went, oh, we're going to build this yeah. big plant, blah, blah, blah. We don't see any sign of it being built. Yeah. Right. Because right. they know that. damn Bruce well that they, can, the they can open up a plant Patrick with 5,000 people. The 5,000 people are going to work in, and <laughs> 5,000 people won't show up. Yes. Well, that, that, wait a minute. Let me, you know uh, wait a minute. Patrick, Patrick has his place. hand up. Patrick <laughs> has his hand up. Yes, Patrick. Uh, Foxconn is being built right now. It It's just about mm, a half hour away from me. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, they've already cleared most of the uh, area for the building to go up. They've got a few walls up for one of the buildings. So... It is getting built, but that's not why I had my hand up. Um, 
wanted to agree with um, uh, Brian that, you know, the, the, the thing is, we in the last 20 or 30 years have been sending our kids to college for white collar jobs mm -hmm. because Myself included. that's where everything was going to be. Everything's white collar, everything's white collar. And what we're not doing, and maybe we are a little bit more now because the white collar jobs aren't really there, we need to send kids or at least encourage our kids to go to tech school to pick up uh, that sort of skill because, yes, sitting on an assembly line sucks, but all of our ancestors, well, maybe not all of ours, but we've had people in our families that did that, that were sitting on a bottling line or, or whatever, and they made a good living at it. Right. They were able to uh, raise a family and buy a house. And the thing is, like for me personally, I would never able to do manual labor because of my different physical issues I've had. So I went to college for white collar work, but I'm out of work. And I'll be damned, I wish that I could do some of that blue collar stuff working in a factory, working here, but it's not safe. You know, I mean, in my position. Right. But, that's, but Brian's right with that, that we're conditioned now for the last however many decades. 30 or 40 years. Yeah. John and I. Wait, 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 wait. John had his hand up the, first. Uh, wait a minute. It, it, yeah. You know, it, 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 it may suck. To sit on an assembly line, I would have finished what Patrick was just saying. It may suck to sit on an assembly line, but it sucks even worse to have to resort to cooking meth in a trailer park or living in a cardboard box under a fucking under a fucking bridge somewhere. In yeah. Hey, it, hey, it's not just uh, uh, assembly line work. I'm in construction. I've been in construction Me too. for 40 years, yeah. and it it g gives you a good living. Uh, I'm happy to say in Marin County, where I live. The junior colleges are now partnering yeah. with uh, uh, some labor unions that are teaching trades in the junior college system. Mm -hmm. So they're getting on to this. They're realizing what you're saying, Patrick. And I make a good living as a construction worker. Uh, I've been able to buy a house in Marin. You can't do that anymore now. Right. Uh, so uh, it's not just assembly line work. There are a lot of service sector jobs that are worthy. I got two college degrees too. And w w what am I doing? I'm working in construction. That's where I make my best money. Yeah. Uh, yes, Pat. Uh, 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 Pat. <laughs> Phil. Yeah. Uh, John and I are both uh, in the trades. I've, I've been in the trades for over 40 years myself. And even though physically I'm not actually doing the work anymore i'm still uh, an integral part of the trades and it's because of my trade experience that i'm able to do what i do now and uh you know not like i like uh, john was saying not everybody is on an assembly line when they're blue collar john creates stuff i see what he does he, he's, a, he's an artist and you know even though i sell the middle of the road kind of stuff uh, I'm still making people's okay. homes beautiful. But none and of you, none of you, John and, and Phil, are in a business which is repetitive work. I do the same no, thing. No, for no, every no, customer. no, no. But you're in a different house. Uh, it's a different size rug. What we're well, talking about is wait a minute, on an assembly line, you're putting in a dome light. And then you're putting in the next dome light. And you're assembly. putting in the next yeah, but Would you dome. rather do that, Alex, or would you rather, like I said before, cook meth in a trailer park and get arrested and serve a fucking life sentence yeah. or you live know. in a cardboard box under a bridge? Well, I'm not, I, I, I I'm not going to cook meth, so I did the second best thing. I went I into find. radio. Yeah. Uh, uh, what were you uh, saying, uh, Alex? You're well, locked on. Because Phil wasn't listening. Uh uh, no, I, 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 I don't cook math. I did. I chose another. <laughs> I, cho my point. I chose to go into broadcasting instead. But that's you, know. you though. But I'm talking about the rest of them. I had your macaroni and cheese, Blue and you should cook. <laughs> hey, don't, there's the gig economy too. There's oh, God, Uber drivers, uh, Airbnb hosts. There, there's, uh, there's another whole job section sector out there that's not Sector. just repetitive skills and well, by the way it. those repetitive skills are done by thousands and th tens of thousands of walmart workers 
uh, Amazon workers yeah, and warehouses. You, you know, uh, that's a whole other discussion. Yeah, but what, what I'm, what I'm saying is, is, is that, that, that China has been able to do it because they have a whole population that's dying for jobs like that because they live out in the country and their families are poor and they want to give them a better life. And these companies like Foxconn, even though they don't pay that great, you know, even though yeah, they're, they're, right. they're not considered right. great payers, they're, they, they give them enough money that they can, can help their families. Alex, yeah. I don't deny them a better life, but not at the expense of of an Ameri of American jobs. But you see, you don't understand, Phil, that the world has changed, and the job no, no. Of, wait a minute the job of those countries has become being the manufacturing countries. We have turned into something else altogether, and we the have yet to changed. adopt. We have not yet to adapt. Know, we've yet. You know wait a minute. How let, me short I am let me finish. Of, let me finish. Let me finish. We have yet to adapt to that. You know, we're not a manufacturing country anymore. That's what we once were during we back back again. prior to the 50s. After the 50s, we matriculated into something else to what we are today. Who knows what that is? Uh, but it's not. We don't manufacture any longer. We create. We send. Uh, we. And it's a world economy now, too. It's like you didn't used to go to China to get something built because it was too expensive to bring it over here now. Hell, I order a, a Mac Mini, and where's it being shipped from? It's being shipped from... Well, uh, Creek, uh, Malaysia. From, 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 <laughs> from Shanghai. <laughs> and and I'm going, well, how long is this going to fucking take to get here? And, be <laughs> and before I know it, four or five days later, it's at my front door. And I can see where it's gone to Alaska, and it's gone to here and to there. Low government you know, oversight. But that's because we're a world economy now. We have to learn how to work within that framework and to be competitive in that framework. And There's we have plenty it. of other stuff besides putting in a dome light that people can do, create, and make stuff. And, uh, you know, but uh, our economy has become a service economy rather than an economy that makes stuff. In the triangle of trade, yes, but what I'm you saying, need Phil, all Phil, lot, the, the, three legs. The world changes. The world changes, and we have changed as a country as to what our position economically yes, in that world is. Well, it so used bad. to be buggy whips, and now it's something else. I mean, it, the products change, but people still have needs. I mean, you talk about Amazon warehouses employing these uh, thousands upon thousands of people. That really is part of our new economy, are the Amazons of the world, okay? Uh, an idea that was made in the computer world and has then extended to give jobs to people uh, to fulfill the needs of that of those businesses. Yes, uh, Patrick. Just remember this: it, it, and it, what you were saying, Alex. If everything changing, and there is a good possibility that if you know, like John was saying, um, some of the uh, tech schools are, are pairing up with uh, unions or or. Too many colleges. Right. Um, it, we may never reach where we were in the past at manufacturing and at uh, doing uh, manual labor sort of stuff. But I think with the blue gutter, white collar stuff drying up and becoming more automated, mm -hmm. you're not going to have a machine build a house anytime soon. Right. And I think that we may be able to go back at least a little bit to where we're doing manual labor sort of stuff, whether it's assembly, whether it's what John does, whether it's what Phil does. Um, well, I think well you're, you're, very, you're very right, Patrick, that China can't build you a house. Right. Okay. Right. They can build you a car, but they can't build you a house. It's going to be a hybrid. I mean, like you said, things change. We won't go back 50, 60, 70 years, but we might be able to go back 30 years. You ever see manufactured housing that comes in a box? They put it on a rail car. Out it comes. They deliver it to to a lot. Well, and four well, days later, later, it's well, assembled. Wait a Hold on a second. Well, Rob, is, is, isn't yeah. that what, what happened with you, with your house? Rob, your hand is up, so I may as well go to you now. Yes, Rob. My house is assembled in a, in a factory. factory. Um, and it's delivered in 
sections. It's delivered like uh, all of the the two by fours are nailed together, and then they they bring these big cranes in, and they stand one wall up, and then they are you know they connect all of the all of the you know the, they connect the the the, the roof. And they and they and they lock it down that way. So yeah, they tell you that the reason they do that is because it they build a house that's in it's in controlled environment in terms of uh, you know uh, you know uh, humidity and all that the wood and you know and all that crap. It's a bunch of bullshit. But it, it, they they build the house extremely quick here. I mean, these houses but, go up. But like, but you know, nevertheless, well, those those, are frame, those frames those frames but of houses. You'll never. No. You could do that in China. Yeah, but most of those manufactured homes are built in the U.S., and that's a good. They're thing. They're all built here. Yeah. yeah. And well, as you look at if you, you go on an airplane and you fly over any big city, and you look at all the building and everything. This, this right here, hands are what built those things, and American workers are what built homes and the yeah. okay. high rises. Okay. And Jeff has his hand. About well, yeah. I can't. Jeff had his hand up first, then Rob. Yes, Jeff. Um, I, I'm. i really. I feel bad for you, for you because you have to realize that that what you're doing is going out of business, and and it's just like all kinds of. I, I used to run a manufacturing. Place. What do you mean? What what what? Who's doing? Uh, well, he was talking about building stuff oh, oh, uh, I, okay. for houses. Yeah. Okay, where it's still done by hand, so to speak. The whole hand concept anybody who who's got any brains knows that that they're going to change it to automate it more and more and more and reduce <laughs> no, the hands sorry of man i, I work in that build- industry it, it, I, that's I, I not true i'm watching a building that is down not the true street. Well, 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 I, I, I really wait, disagree with you. Well, wait a minute, but and you Rob, know what? I, I, I built. <laughs> yeah, but airplane. I work in it every day. I, I built. <laughs> I built medical yeah, devices. Too. I built radiators. And a lot of that stuff, which used to be done by thousands of people, are done by tens of people. Well, yeah, that stuff. Yeah. Uh, pe- and that's uh, uh, yeah. And you got to understand, that's the way the thing's going. Rob? Think back to this country back in the day when it was really coming up. We had big dreams. We built the, uh, what was the Hoover Dam? Yeah, we we built the subway systems in New York. Yeah, State Highway. No machine we, is going to build that. We we, but nothing. Uh, what I, my point is that we can't do any of that anymore today. Why? You know, you know, true. you know, it's really funny. Oh, come oh, on, what's my really, friend, what's really, my wait, friend on a second. The what's really that dug the tunnel on the yeah. Union Square in San Francisco, mm-hmm. and uh, and how for, long does it take to do the tiniest little piece? Wait a minute, hold on a second. How many billions of dollars? Hold on a second. The first subway that was built in New York was the number one. Went from City Hall all the way up to the up to the Bronx. Uh, they just dug a ditch. <laughs> they put tracks down. They covered it up with grating, and there was your subway. I think they built it in a year and a half. With they just they, ju- they just of- built they just built the uh, the Second Avenue subway, uh, and it goes from 96th Street to 69th Street, okay? And it took them five years or 10 years. I can't remember how long it took them. And if they go further down, it's going to take even longer. All of us will be dead before they're finished with the Second <laughs> Avenue <laughs> line. When they, built, when, they built the, when they built the Empire State Building, you know how long it took them to build that? A year and three quarters, I think. They got Whoa. it under, they and they and they beat their. Uh, they got it in under, you know, faster than they were supposed yeah. to. Yeah, building the same building today, eh, not so easy. Not so easy. That, yes, Tim. Had. Tim has joined us. Yes, Tim. Good evening. Yeah. Uh, I, I think we're underestimating what can be automated in the future, because mm-hmm. the biggest restaurant chain in, in Indonesia is going to have <laughs> replaced five thousand waiters and five thousand chefs with, with robots. And we're not talking about a couple of years from now. We're talking in the coming year. I saw that in Vegas. I walked into a bar and there was nobody there. It was all computer arms. And you ordered your drinks and these computer arms that were spinning around, mixing all the drinks, doing everything. They had a bar in Vegas that was all computerized. How was the yeah, drink? When, when the, those machines break down. 
Well, then comes out and fixes and they them. Get repaired. Yeah, but let yeah, me but ask you this. Them. Let me ask you this question, Rob. How was the drink? Oh, the drink, everything tastes exactly the same yeah. because, right, you're not going to get a heavy hand. You're not going to get a guy that's going to pour a little more scotch for you or, you know, you're going to get an exact mix. And, uh, you know, it tasted fine, it's but everything tastes exactly the same. It's tough to tell your troubles to a robot. You don't have to tip a robot. <laughs> you don't, no, they're programmed to talk back. One of the first computer programs was Eliza or whatever it was used for psychoanalysis. There was an the automatic. There, there was an a- automatic bar machine, where when you ordered a drink, uh, they would go over to the. They would punch it into this this machine, and it would, it would pour the perfect amount of yeah. of alcohol. So they didn't they didn't, it cheat you. But on the other hand, they didn't give you more than you should get, and it it got more booze out of a bottle than uh, than a right. bartender. Yeah, they like you, so they give you a little extra. And you know what? Exactly. I, I remember and you know, and you know, and you know, who, you know who invented that? Needix. No, Larry <laughs> Flint. That's how Larry he made his Flint. first. That's how he made his first money was creating and selling those machines. So yeah. I, I used to DJ at Houlihan's in uh, in Roosevelt Field, Long Island, and oh, we I used had to rent to them. We used to uh, have those machines there. When I first started there in 82, 83, whenever it was, they had those machines. Do you know they took them out because they were a negative? Yeah. <laughs> they were you considered know, a negative. Everybody was like, yeah, look at these computerized drinks. Nobody's getting a really good drink. And they took them out. Who I remember going to Sausalito New York and eating an Titanic. automat. Yeah. Uh, chock full of nuts or Needix. Really? Well, Needix didn't serve alcohol. No, they served hot dogs and uh, hamburgers and sandwiches, right? Yeah. So I mean, yeah. but Needix, just like chock full of nuts. Yeah. But all hey, uh, when you have to go to a doctor, you're not going to go to a robot. You're going to want to go to a, a live person. You well, know? you're kind of or going, a massage therapist. You're, you're not going to have a robot. You're kind of going to a robot. The Japanese now. are coming up with these sex bots. And, yeah, uh, know. you know, and I think <laughs> that they confirm. No, but I, I disagree I, on the doctors. I, I disagree <laughs> on the doctors because yeah, they are too. using AI for doctoring. Yep. And an, an AI can access every case in the, that's ever been recorded in yep. history and yep. can find uh, Dr. House type cases and, and give you uh, better medicine that's fitted for your physique and for your. Um, Metabolism. Uh, yeah, well, AI I went telling. to a chiropractor today, and there's no way any kind of a robot is going to be able to do yeah, it. And there's no for way me, what my chiropractor did. Yeah. Sorry. I would never yeah. say no way, though. Yeah, no, I would never right. say no, no, no way. No, 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 no. There's something about. I, I think uh, you can do what a chiropractor. The human is. body. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. First of all, Patrick, and then Jeff. Um, I need to think. I, Full I, house. I agree Full house. partially that will never get fully automated with medicine. But if you look at any of the shows on television, and I don't mean the dramas, I mean Astro on Discovery Channel and that, how many surgeries are being done by a surgeon, but he has his hands on control like a video game. By surgery. 14 different things and their scalpel and they're suturing, not by hand, but with the machine. And it, it, it still takes a doctor right now, but my guess is in the very near future, there are going to be surgeries that are going to be performed completely by robot, and the only human aspect will be will be to finalize the sign off or whatever no, it is. The, the bill i was i was going to say that the the, the only <laughs> the, the only aspect that's going to not be handled by a robot is the sending of the bill you know. <laughs> so, I, so i can go to best buy and get my colonoscopy you, you know yeah. my my prostectomy was done uh with uh, robotics there were six uh six things that went into my abdomen and uh and removed the prostate yeah. You know, uh, and the doctor was just on the outside uh, with his fingers in some sort of uh, contraption, moving things around. Yeah, I love it. Supposed to leave less of a scar that way. Yeah. Supposed- yeah. Yeah. Quicker yeah. recovery time. Hey, yeah. I would rather see live guys in the Dodgers and the Red Sox than fucking robots playing baseball. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, 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 Charlene has joined us. Charlene, something must have been. Uh, 
tickling your fancy in this discussion. Oh, Alex, you're talking to me? Yeah. Oh, because I just see a black square. I don't know what's going on. But... Uh, uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, um, it, I, you know, Rob always kind of is very eloquent more than I am, and he speaks for me sometimes. And um, what he was saying was nice. And what you said, Alex, I really liked what you said that, you know, when Phil was talking about, like, uh, manufacturing and all that, like, we don't do that anymore. But I like what you said. We don't really know what we do anymore, right? That that's kind of a problem. Well, we I never know. we never figured that one out. You know, we never yeah. we yeah. do we do some things. We have done some things very well in the computer industry. I mean, we came up with things like Amazon. We came up with things like Netflix. You know, we've come up with uh, uh, things like iPhones, which have set the tone for the entire smartphone market. I mean, w these are things we do. But they're, they're not as tangible. A guy like Trump doesn't know how to deal with that. Because Trump comes from an old era where, you know, you sold real estate, right? You built a house, you know. But he doesn't know how to deal with the, with the present economy. He doesn't even know what the present economy is. Coal. And, and that's the problem. Yeah, he, he wants Build to go back. Wall. You're right, Rob. Coal. That's the word. And what I heard the other day was this term. Clean coal. Wait a minute. <laughs> how, do you, how do you get the you know, wait, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Wait a minute. Hold on a second, Phil. What the yeah. fuck is clean coal? All it's coal is dirty. It. It's shit that smells I want, like I want to see those guys who work with clean coal who come home every night and don't have to take a shower. I want to see those guys. Yeah, Look, right. what, what Trump is doing is he's using the resources we have now to get the economy going. No, no, so what he's doing is he's resuscitating what he's of, doing uh, is resuscitating dead economies like the steel industry and the coal industry. Hey, what, yeah. Wall Street doesn't think the economy's going so well. We've that's lost right. everything we gained so far this year. That's right. Ten months down the drain. Yeah, that's the gamble you take. No, Alex, that's what he was bragging robots. about, Phil. In that's sports. what he was bragging about. Alex? Yes. Oh, I can't see if my hand is being seen by you. So, yeah, no. Um, if you hold it up, we'll, on, see, but, we'll see it. You know, I want to let you know, I saw the Roger Stone, you know, yeah. who is Roger Stone. Get I watched Roger it Stone. Yeah. this morning. It was really enlightening, and thanks for recommending that. Because yeah. I think I try to watch it, but until you explained it, I couldn't sit through all of it. It was amazing. It was good. What, did you, what did you think of Roger Stone? He's kind of an asshole idiot. But you know, but isn't he, there something fascinating about him? Yeah, because he's driving politics like today. Yeah, so but I mean, he's he's the Machiavelli. The Machiavelli. There's no question right, about that. Right. How about Rasputin? Maybe he's more of a Rasputin. <laughs> yeah, well, that he's too. Kind of an evil but but type but, but guy, there's something yeah. about him that is so off-putting. I almost liked him. You know, yeah. he's like a he's like a killer clown. He's the court he, he, jester. Yes, yes, exactly. You exactly. got to hand it to him. He he's done amazing things. Yeah, right? he has. I mean, but you got a full house. Yeah, I know we have a full house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Who didn't want to watch robotic sports? Anybody watch BattleBots? Nobody's watched BattleBots. No, I, try, I think they I, bet on them now. Uh, I years ago they got robot fighting, and I went to it um, in San Francisco, and uh, when it first started out. And I just thought, yeah, it's fun seeing two machines saw each other in half, but outside of that, I don't give a shit. Hey, when I was a kid, I want to see real people saw robot. each other. Well, I used to have those. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see real they people saw themselves in half. So, well, what was what was the name of the movie Real Steel? Yeah. About, it was a movie about uh, the people that fought with robots. Yeah, yeah. But it, it uh, you know. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, so, but Rob, are you happy with the home you're living in? Because it is kind of like a prefab, we could say. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's, uh, I'm very happy here. I love it here. Because years ago, free pa uh, prefab homes were terrible. You can't get anything else besides homes built like this today. No builder is building homes with hammers and nails and everything and raw raw materials sent to sites. Well, that's maybe, that's, maybe not, that's not true. Well, that's may, not, not true. true. Sorry. No, yeah, maybe that's not true. Yeah, but you've got to be able to afford it if you're not going to. Well, yeah, it's called custom. Yeah. Yeah, they're not doing that in Santa Rosa where the fires hit last year. There's uh, over three thousand homes. All of them are wood frame constructions. 
contractors with tool belts and nails are building them. Although, Nothing, uh, John, being, that's because yeah. the insurance my, my, is paying. My mm-hmm. friend uh, sells yeah, and she insurance. He yeah. sells manufactured homes, and up in Santa Rosa, uh, what they do is they put in concrete pads, and then they bring in these manufactured homes, and they bolt them down to the pad, and it's and the uh, city of Santa Rosa is accepting these in the burn area. And, you know, he's building yeah, 30. That's not the majority of the homes. They're, but they're what I'm saying, what, what, uh, I think the point is, yeah. like, Rob, uh, his home, if it had been built uh, from the, yeah, and I suppose if you want to, you can go out and have somebody design, help you design a home, and then they can bring everybody in, and they can start pounding the nails and so on. Right, Rob? Uh, well, everything, don't get me wrong, this, this house is delivered on the, and I see them on the road all the time. They come on these big 18-wheelers. And it's just a bunch of frames piled up, yeah. right? And that puts the frame together. Then they deliver the doors and the windows. And all of the pieces are delivered. The sheetrock is delivered. And this stuff's not that put together in a factory. The only thing that's put together in the factory are the frames. Are the frames. Yeah. The rest so of the house is. Then they bring all like the Lego? trades in. Yeah. No. Like no, Legos, it's not like, right? no, no, it's like a regular, it's a wood-framed home, just like any other wood-framed it's home. Just it's just, a, you know, they, they could sit out in a yard somewhere and put together that frame themselves by hammering with nails and so on and then putting that's up right. the frame. It's the same thing Instead, as if it was built Instead, it's just here, pre-made it's just somewhere else, that's all. Yeah, but yeah. Well, would you want somebody to come out and build your car in your driveway in the rain and the snow it's and not the, the sleet? Same no. thing. It's not the same thing. It's not but the that's same. what they... That's what they how they but tout the it. They say it's, the it's they say the houses, the, the the frames and everything go up in climate controlled environments. But you know how that goes out the window because they build these houses 365 days a year and they deliver. Like I see them now. There's a whole bunch of them because they're still building like crazy here. They're delivering these things and they're just laying in the street in the rain. And in the cold and in the hot and it doesn't matter. Yeah, so yeah. they're building them in climate controlled, but. It doesn't stay there. And at the end of the year, you, they've got to come in and redo stuff because things have shrunk right. or grown. Absolutely. Or, I just had know, them here. A warp just had them come in. And so on. Not, it's not so much that. It's just, it, look, it's natural. You have natural uh, resources that you're building from. By the way, at the, at the last moment, we have a royal flush, ladies and gentlemen, because Bree is calling from Dubai. Whoa. Uh, yeah. No, actually, I'm not in Dubai. You're not in Dubai? Where are you, Bree? No, I'm in Hong Kong. Oh, okay. Uh, wait a minute. We're I don't not know getting. We're not, we're, coming through. We're not getting your picture yet, so I don't know. Yeah. I don't that know if it's picture gonna... there looks like on the set of Justified. No, this, I'm just getting a blank screen here. Oh, I'm getting a picture. It looks like it's like a serial killer's bedroom or something. Uh, oh, really? Well, I. Oh, have... uh, it could be me. <laughs> No. Oh, turn okay. your camera, uh, uh, Bree. Turn your camera off and turn your camera back on again. Stuff stacked up. <laughs> okay. Turn it off and then turn it back on again. Ah, uh, the set of hoarders. Did you say serial bomber or serial killer? <laughs> Same thing. Uh, I could be a serial killer. No, somehow I'm not getting. I'm not getting your picture. Oh, here we go. There, there we go. I got gotcha. you. you do do a, do a, do a landscape as opposed to portrait. <laughs> where are you? You're in an airport. Yeah. Where are you? Yeah. The airport in Hong Kong, I uh, guess. Yeah, it's <laughs> Hong Kong. Yeah, and, and you, uh, have, you, have you just arrived or are you leaving? Uh, I just arrived about a uh, half an hour ago, and I'm supposed to be leaving in a half hour, but they delayed it, so oh, I'm here oh, for three hours. Oh, so now. you're going somewhere else from Hong Kong? I'm going on to Taipei. Taipei. Wow. Yeah. Well, I hope you'll try and call us from there so we can see what Taipei looks like. Oh, where I'm staying is beautiful. It's in a green mountain, mountainous area. So yeah, I hope to be able to call. Oh, in. try and do it Wait. if you can. Uh, by the way, by the there? way, speaking of Taipei, meet Phil. He's Taipei. Yeah. yeah. Hey, <laughs> Reed, did you get did you get a job in uh, Taipei or? No. Uh, yeah. uh, this one's just, this is just a conference, but. Uh, I'm still negotiating for one here in, in Southeast Asia, and I'll know more in about two months. Yeah, where, one is, or two months. where is Taipei exactly? Taiwan, Taipei, Taiwan. Taiwan. Um, it's, yeah, so it's about an uh, hour and 50 minutes flight from Hong Kong. Okay. 
and uh, I they had an earthquake two or three days ago, so I'm hoping that's done with. Yeah. Although I hear Greece just happened now, so I think the Earth's moving a little bit. Wow. But, uh, you know, on this flight over from Dubai to uh, Hong Kong, the audio didn't work on my uh, entertainment uh, set, so oh I didn't get to watch anything. But, uh, I, you know, I debated whether to complain about it, and then I figured, well, I was just sleeping anyway, so. Right. But, right. you know, but, you know, if you buy a combo meal and they leave off the drink, I mean, you feel a little slighted, you yeah, know, yeah. You, you're paying a price. You know. they, they couldn't switch your seat? Uh, they offered to do that, but it was, a, it was a bad seat. I had a nice window seat, so I'm, I just said, no, nah, I'll just... I, and actually, I listened to some old... Uh, I listened to the last two rambles and got caught up. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, it ain't, it ain't that bad. And uh, so... Yeah. Uh, so uh, well, anyway, so Taipei is in Taiwan... Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay, but Taipei isn't called Taiwan; it's called Taipei. Uh, yeah, it is. It's, it's, like, it's like New York, New York. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. <laughs> no, no, Taipei. Huh? Taipei is the city. Taiwan yeah. is the, the country. Dare I say, country? The country. Well, yeah. Island. Here, I have to be careful. I guess I don't have to be too careful about that here in Hong is, Kong. Is this who, who, if I were in mainland, I'd what, get what, it. Which which airlines did you fly? What airline did you fly? He asked. Cathay uh, Pacific. That's what, oh, Cathay that's, what Pacific. that's what I think my wife took to go to Hong Kong, was Cathay Pacific. Probably. Yeah. 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 I, I, I'm just curious because I've been watching the new Manifest TV series. Yeah. Where they lose five years while they're in the air. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah. I've lost five years in the air taking a plane flight. You know, at least I felt that <laughs> way. We, 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 lose, we lose five years while we're uh, on the uh, citizens. Panel. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> that's you know, <laughs> uh, he, he listened to two citizens panels and or the ramble, and that's how he was able to sleep uh, on that long flight. <laughs> it, it did. Huh? I woke up and I said, "Did I hear the end of that conversation? What did Renee say?" Yeah. I, I can't remember. I fell asleep. <laughs> wow! But it was a night. So, I, I still yeah, got to tell you that you know that the one valuable, wonderful thing that happened with age is that I'm able to sit here, do a citizens panel in which one person is in Cal, two people are in California and one's in Wisconsin, another one's up in Connecticut, another one's out in Queens, another one's in New Jersey, and we got another guy in Hong Kong. Amazing. You know, and uh, uh, you know, it, it's amazing. It, yeah, it's I'd rather amazing. be in Hong Kong. <laughs> <laughs> And the picture that I'm unfortunately I'm, I'm stuck here. You know, so it sounds, it sounds like you're making a pitch to Sirius. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Have you seen God Friended Me, the new show? No, no I'm, he, pitches, I'm, he pitches his podcast to Sirius, and the Sirius guy is really mean. Uh, oh, really? You know, Alec, yeah. I wasn't able to play some millions of Powerball. But now that I'm part of the Citizens Panel, I am playing, aren't I? Yes, yes. you are. But yeah, yeah. But it's it, it, we haven't got a new Powerball yet. It's back to the cheap Powerball. No, I <laughs> thought it was seven hundred and something million. Well, really? Yeah. Alex, yeah. Get out there and play. Get out there and play, Alex. We yeah. need to win. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I've played that sucker's game. <laughs> Hey, Bree, thank you for calling us from Hong Kong. Thank you to uh, our good friend Brian for calling us from, uh, where are you again? You're in... Pennsylvania. Huh? In, Pens in Pennsylvania? Pennsylvania. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Jeff Stein from Connecticut, thank you. Uh, Rob Alfano, uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Anthony Magno. Thank you, Charlene. I don't know what we're seeing, but it's... Uh, I know. <laughs> It's I your, don't know what you're saying either. It's your floor. <laughs> it's your foot. It's your floor. Uh, oh, my foot? <laughs> uh, yeah, your foot. Right. Uh, Phil Meyer, thank you. Thanks, John Perulis. Call more Go often, Red will you? My yeah. foot's way. Uh, Patrick thanks, Blazing. Tim. Thanks, Tim, from Area 51. We really love having you here. Tim, thank you for calling. Area 51 and a half. Yeah, thank, okay. you, thank you all for calling. Why don't you give a big wave goodbye to everybody so they can see you saying goodbye. That's a, what a... A royal flush looks like, folks, and uh, that's our uh, that's our citizens panel for tonight. Uh, let me just uh, hang up on them here rudely, so that I can uh, leave the lines open for the next show, which is Jack Bishop and the Intersection. That will be followed at uh, one o'clock in the morning by Connections, and then tomorrow night, 
9.30, it's uh, The Exchange with Damian Chaplin. I'll be back here again, yeah, tomorrow night, 10 o'clock. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Night, everybody. Night, everybody.